All right, welcome back. Episode 170 of Chaotically Intolerant. Uh, we are going to be talking baseball today. The White Sox are really, really bad. The Rangers and Astros had a classic last night. And then a uh, little football preview. Football is officially, officially here. The real preseason games start this week. Um, and we're going to be doing our division predictions. Who do we think is going to win the, each division? And I guess a little reason why. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I know that's, you know, that's a lot to do, but like, comment, subscribe, maybe drop uh, where we got it wrong because we always get something wrong. Somebody called me an idiot for saying the Jordan Love contract is not that bad, and I still think it's not that bad. But let's go. All right, so, Mike, let's start off with probably the most embarrassing sports franchise in sports right now. Are, are the White Sox just, is this the single season most embarrassing moment in, in a long yes. time, I think? Yes, it is. And they didn't trade Luis Robert. They didn't trade Garrett Crochet, although he his comments probably had a hand in that. Um, they've kind of been like off and on in a rebuild over the years. I mean... Forget they were in, they were the division champions in 2021 with Tony La Russa and they, you know, faced the Astros in the, in the uh, division series, but the wheels have totally come off and they just look like, I mean, they're getting their brains beat and they're not just losing like close games. They're just not really very competitive at all. And it's gotta be, and you know how mental baseball is where, you know, you lose like two or three and all of a sudden it's, it can really spiral out of control. And um, are, are they worse than the uh, Orioles, the hundred loss Orioles? And you I think so. And I think that they're very much on par with the 2003 Tigers who came very close to setting the futility record, but actually had a surge like the last week and a half or something of that season. If I recall to, avoid. There was a, I think there was a walk off or like a big comeback in the final couple of games. They, they had two of their final three wins that year were walk-offs. Yeah. They beat <laughs> Minnesota who actually was a, a post that was like kind of right in the beginning of Minnesota being relevant in their uh, annual quest to waste the postseason spot. Yeah. The Tigers just narrowly avoided it. They went five and one over their last six games. Cause they were 38 and one eighteen prior to that. And the White Sox, I mean, like, just look at their schedule coming up, too, and it's not very forgiving. I mean, they're in Oakland now, so this is their chance to get the Cubs for a couple, you know, north side, south side thing. But then Yankees, Astros, Giants, Tigers, Rangers, Mets, Orioles, Red Sox, Guardians, who they've actually played. Well, they actually took three out of four from the Guardians earlier this year, um, which may just be a reason that we shouldn't be picking the Guardians to go anywhere. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's it's just a total mess. And... You think about they have, you know, some veteran guys. You think about the veterans, like the young guys, they don't really know any better, you know, on these teams. And it's kind of like, oh, maybe this is just my uh, sort of introduction to the big leagues. But if you think about veterans who are actually in that lineup, you know, or guys that have. How about Miguel Vargas? He got traded from the Dodgers. I mean, so he gets a World Series. Oh, yeah. I, I saw the picture of him sitting in the, in yeah. the bullpen or the dugout just like. Literally staring into space. He's like, my God, I cannot believe I just got sent here. Like, again, he does get a ring if they if the Dodgers win. So there's that. But, yeah, I mean, Andrew Benintendi, you know, who has a ring, obviously, with the Red Sox. And he was he was the I know he was the biggest signing in their history. Like financially, he was the biggest contract they had ever given out. He might. And I love Benny. That might be one of the worst signings in, in their history as well. I mean, he has been really bad. Really, really bad. Yeah, his his career since the World Series year um, has really fallen off. Fallen off. I mean, the last Got few years. 206. I mean, yeah, he's in 206. He only had eight homers. I mean, he. Uh, uh, sorry, he only had five homers in 2022. He only had five last year. Is nine this year? Like he's not a power guy anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah, 2019 was his best year as a hitter statistically. It was two two ninety for an average. Um, 
16 homers, really not, I guess, horrible in uh, 148 games. And yeah, his best homer year was 2017, actually. Um, mm-hmm. But holy shit, yeah. I, I Listen, I feel for the guy. I mean, that is, you know, for the contract that they gave him, Jesus, really bad. Uh, that that has to be the the atmosphere, right? Like, it has to be the Chicago. They just don't, even when they're good, even in 2021, I felt like they didn't really fit in Chicago. You know what I mean? It, they just felt... They feel like the extra team in the in the Cubs and White Sox and, you know, the two team cities. To me, the White Sox have always felt like that extra team that was just like kind of not necessary. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that was such a in a lot of ways was such a one off year. I mean, they that was it's they also made it in the fake season. I call it the fake season. They they also (laughs) made an appearance where they went 35 and 25 and lost the wild card round to the A's in front of, well, about the same amount of fans that the A's play in front of now. Um, <laughs> nobody. Um, but yeah, I mean, prior to 2020, they hadn't made the playoffs since 08. And then before that, the only postseason appearance since 2000 was when they won the World Series in 05, which, I mean, talk about like fluky seasons in sports history, that 2005 White Sox team, uh, you know, we because we talk a lot about the Red Sox, 2013, Boston Strong and all that, like the perfect storm, perfect mix of guys. That 2005 White Sox team is is on par with that in terms of just every single guy that could possibly have a career year did. It all just clicked. It just worked. Ozzy Guillen was a genius for that year, you know, yeah. and and then and they actually had I think they were the best team for like the first half of 06. And they have just never really been the same since. And just is always that, in the battle of the Cubs. So so I think I think that has to happen with a lot of pe- with a lot of the championship teams. Like obviously they were more fluky and they were less, you know, but but the majority of guys it feels like they have to have a career year. Right? Yeah. I feel like like to win a World Series, like you look at the Dodgers like you can be as good as possible, but if your guys like aren't playing to the their top top tier, you're probably not winning a World Series. I think the only one you can maybe point to would in, in recent memory was the 18 Red Sox. Right. Like there were some guys who maybe didn't have the best year, but right. still figured it out. Like they figured out how to win along the way. Like, I think uh, I want to look at that team. You, you but think like, that I think the Dodgers Bryce, could actually get away with some guys not having career years because of the star power that they have. But, yeah. you know, I don't know. I, I've tried. I've spent so much mental energy over the years trying to figure out why a team like the Dodgers or the Yankees in their, you know, more dominant days don't win the world series. And the easiest, laziest narrative is always that it's baseball. It's the randomness of the postseason. It's a fluky game, but I, I know, and you know, and I think everybody knows that there's, there's more to it than that. Sure. That's a part of it. It's probably not as big a part of it as people think it, it does come down to pressure. It does come down to, you know, um, your stars performing like stars. And I really think, I mean, I, the easiest or the most sort of sensible theory that I can think of for a team like the Dodgers or the Yankees, why they don't really win and why the Dodgers probably did win in 2020 is the, when you have nowhere to go, like even when you accomplish your highest goal, all you've done is hit baseline, right? Yeah. I mean, what fun is that to win the World Series when it's more of a relief that you win than joy. And then you have these young teams that are so hungry and have this opportunity and really want to play for their city too. I think that factors into it a lot, especially in a a city that hasn't won a lot that comes together. I mean, I remember hearing about Kansas city when they went, I think it was the year they, the first year they went and Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustaka, some of those core guys, like they, they bought like the entire city drinks. They paid the whole bar tab, like the whole town came and hung out with them after. And like, you just, I'm not saying that that's the norm anywhere, but, and you know, a city like Boston that is so passionate, I think the the players feel a sense of accountability there that they maybe don't in a place like LA or dare I even say New York, because New York's a massive place with a lot of people who actually don't care about sports. It's hard to think of it in that realm, but being here, I can tell you that that is definitely true, that the average person is not just going around telling you about the great rookie season of Luis Hill, you know, that it's not part of the fabric in the way it is in some of these other cities. And I think that that factors in to how these teams perform, especially in October. Yeah. I think the, the well-known 
narrative around Boston was when Brady got there, it was like, okay, like we can't, the Red Sox and the Celtics and the Bruins cannot just be here and let the Patriots, like it's a competition. Yeah. It really, like, that's what it seems like. And I mean, New York clearly doesn't have that because, (laughs) you know, look at, look at the title. Where are the titles? And and I'm saying that as a non-Patriots fan. I'm saying that as a Colts fan who hated those Patriots for a long time, but like, right. There is just something to it. New York isn't doing it. LA, where's the Dodger? You know, where are the Dodgers titles? Even like Cali, just California in general, you know, where's the other titles? The Lakers had their COVID title. And I think that was probably, you can probably say that was a little harder, I think, than the uh, baseball. Yeah. I mean, even that felt kind of weird. You know, it was in the bubble and that's, you know, they, they won in 09 and 10, they won 09 and 10. And then they had their three peat in the early two thousands. And, the Dodgers just have that one and the Rams went all in to win in 2021. And I, I know the Kings had two. I mean, they've had actually a lot of titles. I think they've had, well, if, I don't know if you can count Anaheim. I don't know how it all works. LA's had, I think, double digits, but it's spread out and it never feels like they really need it or want it that badly. It just feels like it means more to other places. And I do wonder if the way that LA's built, you know, you build Even a team, like you don't Seattle. Buy a team. When, when right? Seattle oh, won the Seattle. Super Bowl. Oh, the Seahawks, yeah. Yeah. 2013, right. I, I like that expression. I know that, that people argue that the Dodgers have a great farm system, and they do, but how many prospects do you need to hit on if you're the Dodgers when you can buy and plug in that many holes? I mean, who would have thought going into the season, spending a billion dollars, that they were going to, quote, unquote, need to add another pitcher at the deadline, and yet yeah. here's Flaherty, here's Kopech, here's Edmund, here's Ahmed Rosario. I don't even know if you're a fan, if you can appreciate or if you should appreciate it the same way that if they have kind of been rags to riches. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I will say, like, I I think that 18 team was definitely more bought, you know, than I mean, it definitely was, you know, and the 13 team that was more bought. But those were like older guys. So they weren't developed, but they weren't expected. You know, it was like a late season signing, whatever. That 18 team, like when we went and got Evaldi at the deadline and we already knew we were good. And when I I actually got to see his first start in Boston or his first start for the Red Sox, it was against the Twins at Fenway. It was a Mm. Sunday game. I saw I sat on the monster, too. I bought my own ticket. I I was like 16. So I was like, you know what? I actually bought myself a ticket to come like this feels right. And I, I didn't actually sit on the monster. I was in the standing room. But. When Evaldi came to Boston, there was the excitement. Like, we knew we had bought the other guys. We knew, like, you know, you had Devers there. You had Bogarts there at that point. Mookie was a homegrown guy, so they were a good mix. But, like, when you brought in Evaldi, we just knew. It was like, okay, this, as long as this guy just does his job to a, like, you know, his average, he doesn't even have to have a career year. We're we're going to win the fucking World Series very easily. Yeah, and here, but here's the difference between like the Red Sox are a good use case, and I think the Giants are a good use case here to compare against the Dodgers and the Yankees. And here's the Red Sox have had some amazing seasons. They have more championships this century than any other team, and the Giants are second with three. And the both of those teams, though, and I don't, I like to joke jokingly say this term. It's not actually what the franchises are going for, but they take years off, right? The Red Sox have had some bad. Not just, oh, you know, we only won, you know, 87 games and lost a wild card. I mean, they've had, they were in last place, I think, 12, 14, and 15, for example. Missed the postseason 19, 20, 22, and 23, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the Giants, right? And I don't know, it must be a Bruce Bochy thing because the Rangers kind of stink this year. 11, 13, and 15, the Giants didn't even get to the postseason. I know one of those years, I think it was 13, they had a losing season. There's this sort of idea that, you know, the, the problem is the Dodgers and the Yankees are so good and threatening for the title every single year. And it, it kind of gets it gets very tiresome. And it's it's good that we can hang on the narratives that like the Yankees haven't been to a World Series in 15 years. The Dodgers haven't won a real full season title in 36 years. But it's still more aggravating. Like even if you're if you hate the Red Sox or you hate the Giants, you, they have those titles. But then they have some years where they're just like comically bad. And it's kind of like you almost, what's the word? You almost want to give credit to the Giants and the Red Sox for saying like, we know that that in generally to win championships in baseball, you do have to tear it down and rebuild it properly. And maybe the Red Sox didn't really have to go through this. And maybe the Giants didn't even go through this. But you look at the Braves, look at the Royals and the Cubs. 
the Astros, much as we may not like the Astros, they went through the Phillies now went through long stretches of losing and really rebuilt the right way. Then you start buying guys. Yes, nobody's saying you shouldn't go out and get free agents and make your team better. But this incessant need to be at the top every single year and then still not win almost in a way kind of makes it worse. But I think that's the real difference between why people are really railing against the Dodgers and Yankees and why those teams are the evil empires of Major League Baseball. Yeah, they yeah. are. The Do the Dodgers or the Giants and the Red Sox are like the perfect comparison as well. They are. Yeah. I think people like the Giants. Yeah. Like they like the Red Sox. Like they were, you know, they're always like, you know, not the little brother. Well, for a while, they kind of were the little right. brother to the evil empires of those teams. I will say the one narrative that I don't like when people talk about the Red Sox in 18 is that they did the worst to first thing. Ever, I think a lot of people forget they won the AL East two years in a row yeah, before that. Right, right, you right. Know? So well, they, they were they, the they were preparing. I'm not saying you do that, but a lot of I think a lot of other people say that. Well, that, was they, that 18 team was just primed. Yeah. They were primed at that point. It was it was kind of the Dodgers. It was like, okay, we have to win it this year. Like I think the year before we had like the lead, or maybe in 2016 we had like the league low in home runs. In like 2017, that. that is what it was. Ortiz yeah. retired after 16. JD Martinez was the big, they, they were going after him. It was Martinez was going to Boston. It was a little bit of a stalemate. Yeah. And it was, I'm, I remember I was actually flying home, I think from Florida on President's Day, they signed JD Martinez or right around there. And it was like, okay, this is the move because the Red Sox, like the one thing that had been missing was power. They got out slugged by the Astros in 17. Remember Dave Dombrowski came in. I, I can't remember if it was the end of the 14 or 15 season. He took over for Ben Sherrington. We know how Dombrowski operates. He's kind of the yeah. perfect guy now for the Phillies after that long rebuild where they're back in contention and ready to spend money and ready to sort of mortgage the farm to get that title, you know, yeah. that they've been waiting for since 08. And uh, so, yeah, the Red Sox, no, they weren't worse to first. They were just, they were just a good team who became great in 2018. Yeah. Yeah, um, they were. Yeah, that's it. Um, and the, I think Martinez was really. I mean, he was really the only big acquisition that off season that I can recall. I know Evaldi was traded for mid season. They already had Price and Porcello and Sale have been traded for prior to the seventeen season, and they obviously already had their you know core guys Some, like Bogarts and Devers and um, you know. So I, I, yeah, I think it wasn't. I think Janie Martinez was just a big splash for them that year yeah uh they they already had sale they already had price i was like trying to think of mitch moreland maybe got there that year but he was there the year before nunez was there the year before um i mean you could say maybe devers let me see when did he get no there? devers oh, no he was there 17 i, I remember 17 yeah i remember his home run off uh i want chapman. to say batances in new york in 2017 no it was uh, chapman it was like the was fastest chapman pitch hit for a homer or the, heart, the, the fastest left on left you know there's a video there's a video of a guy a new york a yankees fan sitting in the stands watching it and he's screaming go yeah you know he's being a yankee douchebag and then devers hits it and he, you just watch his face just drop like he watched his whole family die like it was right. it right. was that dramatic i was like oh my god this guy like his life's over now <laughs> just because of one pitch yeah <laughs> all right well also, yeah, I don't think we we didn't get a chance to talk about the Jack Flaherty trade because it happened after we recorded. Um, right. Yeah, the Dodgers just keep adding, add, add, add. add. That's all. Well, they do. my my, I mean, besides the obvious problem of like, of course, the Dodgers get them, but you can't tell me that the Twins, the Guardians, the Yankees, the Orioles didn't all make comparable offers. And my understanding is the Yankees were scared off by his medicals, so you know, and there's a lot of consternation among Yankee fans about. Brian Cashman not making big moves. We're so used to the Yankees, like buying guys and making big moves. And yeah, I know they got Soto this off season, but to, to not see them add a, a starting pitcher is surprising. And apparently they were the team that was going to get Flaherty, but I'm okay. If I'm, you know, as someone who's not thrilled that Flaherty went to LA, I'm angry with the Tigers because you can't tell me that there weren't other teams that made you pretty comparable offers and you're going to go ahead and give them to LA I mean, after everything they've done, if you have a choice, I mean, unless it was like the other teams offered, you know, like a box of pizza and a single A player who's 14 years old, why are you dealing with them? That's the other part of it. And 
I don't know. That was the first thing that came to my head. And I'm surprised that other teams didn't make a big push to get Flaherty because he is really good right now. I mean, maybe he's not going to be really good next year, but who cares? He's a rental. Breaking news right now. Uh, Billy Bean has died. Um, wow. He was young. Billy... He, well, he's 60. Acute myeloid leukemia. RIP to Billy Bean. Wow. Moneyball. Yeah. yeah. Obviously very, very impactful, uh, you know, executive. That's the word. Uh, executive at the major league level obviously changed, I think, how a lot of teams. Oh, started. it's not. It's not that oh, Billy Bean. It's not that Billy Bean? It's not. I actually. Oh, first, my said God. That, that I was apologize. I thought that it was the other Billy Bean. It's not Brad Pitt. The, the guy that Brad Pitt portrayed in Moneyball. Uh, it's not the Moneyball guy. It's it's um, he was MLB MLB's SVP of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. First MLB publicly a player to publicly come out after his career ended. So an ambassador for the game in a lot of ways. So still, I would say, very notable figure in baseball, and very sad to hear. Yeah, still very notable figure. My bad to Oakland, Billy Bean. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sorry, I tried to kill you, man. Uh, but still, very sad. Um, R.I.P. to that. You know that Billy Bean. Um, long, long career, very impactful career. So R.I.P. to him. All right. So let's go to the NFL. First off, big trade that could possibly be coming. I don't think Ayuk's getting traded, but there's three teams right now that are looking at Brandon Ayuk: Pats, Browns, and Steelers. Um, Again, I don't think Ayuk's going to get traded. I think they're going to work something out. This is just what they do. They play hardball. Um, they just That's what the Niners do. They they haven't given it easy to Kittle. They haven't given it easy to Debo. And they didn't give it easy to their kicker, of all people, Robbie Gold. So I couldn't imagine they would give it easy to Ayuk. I think the Niners are going to end up hanging on to Ayuk. I do. And I don't know why. I, I really have no basis for that other than just, that, like you said, the Niners – kind of do this and they they always seem to feel confident and that they have the leverage but it would be interesting to see how much they could get for him because I do think it would be a lot it it's weird because we're shifting here from talking baseball trade deadline where it's yeah. like sometimes there are you know no, you, you think about notable prospects and maybe every now and again there are major leaguers that go for major leaguers in the NFL it's usually just draft picks it's pretty yeah. rare I mean Clinton Portis for Champ Bailey is always the one that stands out because that was just like two great NFL players being traded for one another. But there are teams that are going to be blowing up John Lynch's phone, I would think, just hearing this. Like, this is the time to pounce. If you're a team like the Steelers or the Browns, yeah. especially, I mean, the Patriots, the difference is that I don't think they have a window of contention right now. I mean, I'm, I'm going to push say. back. I'm going to push back on that. I think the Patriots can be good. They They need a competent quarterback. Which yeah. last year they did they not have, have. That. right, and they they need. A, I thought they needed a really big piece for wide receiver. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they did that in the draft. And this is the perfect opportunity for them. They can go out and get a. a he's really a number one receiver. I mean, you look at what Debo does; he's all around the field. But Ayuk is there would be a number one receiver. You plug him in right now, and especially new head coach. This could be a really a kind of tone changer in the Patriots locker room. I said last year at the end of the season, again, the, the, their defense was a top defense in the league. Yeah. You just had to plug in an offense. And especially you take some pressure off the defense to win games. I mean, Jesus Christ, they, they had those three straight games where they didn't give up 10 points and still lost all three. It was yeah, that Bill was Belichick's. Wild. Yeah, yeah. that was in Germany exactly. too. Right, yeah. So yeah. I think they're in. They can be in contention. I mean, you just get Jacoby Brissett, a veteran quarterback, to just be competent. Just don't turn the ball over too much. Run. You know, you have Ramondre Stevenson back there now. You can. You have a threat of a run and a pass at this point. And Jacoby can move. You know, he's he's not he's not super slow. He's a rumbling, bumbling, stumbling guy. Yeah. Um, I love the IU pick to. To, to the Pats. That would well, be I'm not saying he shouldn't, you know, they should, you shouldn't make a move necessarily, yeah. because, you know, because obviously he could help elevate the Patriots to a contender. I just, I just don't know that they'll be as desperate to pony up, uh, you know, draft capital uh, the way that the Steelers and Browns might, because they're, oh, yeah. they're there now. The Patriots could be there, but we don't know. There's still a lot of unknowns and they still want to, you know, be able to put themselves in a position to build that team from the ground up. Gerard Mayo, first year coach. I mean, I think because, the Bills and Dolphins are just worthless in the postseason that like, and the, and the Jets are the Jets that the <laughs> Patriots probably know, like even coming off of 
three or four, however many games they won last year, three or four games, uh, they probably feel like it's not even that they have to be that good. They can just wait for those other teams to kind of implode and just sort of – and that's that's how the Patriots were good for 20 years. I think I used to see this quote. I think I followed. It was Dan Shaughnessy, Boston Globe writer. He used to have this quote, and he would just talk about – he would kind of just denigrate the Patriots and say, like, you know, they were good because the rest of the division was bad. And there's definitely – a lot of truth to that. And it was like, you stand by the, you stand by the side of the river and wait for the bodies of your enemies to float by or something like that, where it was just like, just wait until the bills and the dolphins remember who they are and the jets become the jets. And then the Patriots will be right back in contention every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that. I mean, every year we would sit there and and you would listen to the pundits go, Oh, the Patriots are done now. They're, They're finished. No, they're not. They're just yeah. waiting. They're resting. They're they're saving their energy and they're letting yeah. everyone else fall. You know, they'll, they'll give up a few losses early in the year, say fuck you yeah. or, you know, doesn't matter. They they really it did I remember when the Patriots would lose and I was in high school and I'd be like, "Yeah, it doesn't matter. Their their games really don't matter." I hear Patriots fans saying, "Those Brady teams, they were like, we wouldn't even have to watch a regular season game. You watch like maybe like week 13 and on and then you watch the playoffs and that's that's perfectly fine. You never needed to watch those because they were just so damn good. And you didn't need to listen to what anyone had to say because they were they were wrong. They, they said it every year, literally every year until the final year when we were finally like, okay, now he's done. Yeah. Like those, and he wasn't even done. I, I think it was more his team let him down more than anything. But yeah, yeah. It was like you would, you know, it was pretty rare. You'd occasionally get like a December loss. You'd get excited about the Patriots losing like the Miami <laughs> Miracle in 2018. And then they, they lost the week after that. And they were nine and five. I remember that one because that was uh, the Patriots were in danger of not getting a bye. And Brady, mm-hmm. as a Patriot, never got to the Super Bowl when he didn't have a bye. I mean, he did it with Tampa when the year he left. But um, it, the Texans, I think it was the Texans lost to the Eagles. And then the Patriots put something on Twitter about how a year later, Nick Foles is their savior. Like he beats him in the Super Bowl and then he beat the Texans and it helped the Patriots get a bye. And then the rest is history. And they went on and beat the Chiefs and the, beat the Rams. So, yeah. Yeah, crazy. All right, let's, I guess we can, we can talk a little bit about training camp battles a, a little bit there. The Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson and Bo Nix that, that three person battle over in Denver first game on Sunday against the Colts as well. Uh, which I, I, I love, I love the Colts being on Sunday. That's just so awesome. Um, cause Sunday football is that's real. I, I don't like the preseason games on Saturday. I just like keeping it on Sunday. It's a good like training tool for you as, as the viewer, you know, it's like, okay, here you go. You, you got to sit, you got to be able to pay attention to all whatever six, seven games, you know, that are going at the one o'clock slot, four o'clock slot, whatever. Bo Nix, Jared Stidham, Zach Wilson. Are we going to fall for the Zach Wilson is good thing again? I, I mean, can Sean Payton be fooled? I Sean like Payton going to fall for it. Yeah, who cares if we fall for it? <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't want Sean Payton. To fall. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like has Bo Nix really looked all that good in training camp? I mean, it kind of, the reports were kind of negative, right? Yeah, the, so well, the first step chart is actually Jared Stidham as the right. starter, Zach Wilson number two, Bo Nix number three. Now those are, I don't really read a lot into the first week of the pre preseason depth chart. Sometimes they just do it strategically. But th- is there anything to really be excited with this Denver team? Seriously, no. I mean, their record was what were they like eight and nine last year or something? I mean, they weren't. They and, weren't. And Russell wasn't bad. Last year, either he wasn't. And they they benched him at, at the end, right? But he wasn't. I mean, that was after they started winning some games. They were actually playing pretty, pretty confident football. You know, right? The Broncos won eight games last year. Yeah. yeah, and you figured like, okay, Sean Payton's got a year under his belt. But now they go in, and Stidham played okay. I mean, speaking of we're talking about Patriots and Patriot quarterbacks, and do you really feel like he's the future? No, but you have to feel like. If you're Sean Payton, you want to feel like the guys behind him are the future. And Zach Wilson's not the future. He may be a plug and play. He, I could see there being a scenario where like Zach Wilson comes in in like October, November, plays a couple great games. And there's like this big wave of, oh, we're so sorry. Zach Wilson's found it. And then he plays a couple bad games and we never hear from him again. 
and he's just back on the bench. And then Denver's trying to figure out who their quarterback is. I, w- I wouldn't be shocked if that happened. Um, but I think they'll go with I, my guess is they would go with Stidham just because he's a veteran, just because he played competent football in those couple starts he had at the end of last year. But I don't know. You're right. And that are the Chiefs, if the Chiefs are the new Patriots, is the AFC West the new AFC East is my question. Well, Zach Herbert. Wilson apparently is falling behind. They said his reps, he only had one turn with the first team practice or the first team offense in, in the last 10 practices. Yeah, they're they're taking t- the other nine. They're switching off between Nix and Jared Stidham. They are saying they think that Bo Nix just isn't ready yet, but they think he'll be able to do it. I did see a pretty cool video of him just talking to his team and just seemed like a leader, seemed like a a real leader, just a pretty pretty awesome guy. Um, but I just want to point out that this is very unfortunate because we're going into a season where we're hoping to not see the Chiefs be the first team to three-peat. And the three teams in their division, the Chargers right now may not have Justin Herbert to start the year, right? He's dealing with, I think it's plantar fasciitis, which means they could have Easton Stick and Oh, by the way, they do play each other in September. The Raiders have a quarterback battle between your guy, Gardner Minshew, and Aiden O'Connell. And the Broncos have no clue who they're going to start in week one. Maybe Jared Stidham. And so the Chiefs talk about a team that doesn't even have to sweat and spend energy in the regular season. I think nine wins will do the trick for the Chiefs this year. They can save all their energy. They can let their fans stew all they want about the receivers can't catch and this and Mahomes doesn't look right and that and then they get to the postseason rested and ready to roll so the on the chargers they have a little wide receiver battle going i mean it's it's a skeleton room compared to what they had last year so last year well here here's a a stat from espn 57 percent of herbert's career completions passing yards and passing touchdowns went to Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, and Gerald Everett. They are Mm. all not on the team anymore. There's only one Chargers receiver with over 1,000 yards in a season, and it was DJ Chark for the Jags in 2019. Uh, Joshua Palmer, they said, is the leading person to be number one. We have Quentin Johnson and Ladd McConkie and DJ Chark also battling, I think, for the number one slash two. Um, Conkey just, he's young. He's a first round pick, right? It's, it's going to be tough to see him start the season at number one, but I mean, Quentin, Quentin Johnson, am I correct? He's the guy that just could not catch the ball last year. Just could not hold on to the ball. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, this in his most recent five games, five targets, two receptions, six targets, three receptions, five targets, two receptions, three targets, two receptions, four targets three receptions so not I guess not great to have as your number two I would see maybe it's probably gonna be DJ Chark as the number two there and McConkey will probably make his move in you know towards the end of the season um let's go to the NFC a little bit it's a quarterback battle in Washington so Jaden Daniels was named the number one right now on the depth chart as we go into the season or into this first preseason game um what do you what are you thinking in, in Washington? Roll with the young quarterback. You got nothing to lose. The commanders are are so far off the mark and they've bungled so many things over the years. I think you just you just go with the young kid. You let him get some experience. Um, I mean, unless he's just so bad that he's not ready. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm curious to see how this defense gels though. They've got some We've got some new additions. They've got a defensive-minded head coach. Uh, I don't think they're going to realistically compete for a postseason spot this year, but they can set the foundation, you know? Yeah. Um, and then what's another one? Well, Daniel Jones started a fight in a uh, joint camp with the Lions, so that's pretty hilarious to me. You know, he's, he's I may, maybe he's just getting a fire lit under his ass. I, I hope that's what it is. I don't want to see the kid fail. Um, I hope it just – he lit a fire under his ass and he's trying to light a fire under his team's ass. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if the former NFC runner up, you don't want to be fighting with Daniel Jones. Don't even waste your time. No. Seriously. I I love joint camp too. I really love joint camp there. There's like, it feels like there's really no reason for it. Right. Like, cause you're going to be playing the preseason games anyways. 
doesn't feel like there's really a need for it, but we still do so we still do it. Especially with the safety stuff and all that stuff. Logically, you wouldn't be doing joint camp, right? I mean, I think I'm somewhat reasonable on that. Um, all right, let's let's do let's just go to our division predictions and we'll get out of here. We're gonna start in the AFC. I think we're gonna go we'll go like East Divisions and then North Divisions, South Divisions, West Divisions. Start in the AFC East. Got the Bills, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets. Who's winning and why? Man, I want to pick somebody other than the Bills again because they're just—it's just they waste a spot every year in the postseason. You know, I want to pick the Jets. I just, but I can't do it. I can't do it. And the Dolphins, uh, like if they win, what good is that either? I'll just—I'll say Miami. I'll say Miami because you know, look, it's Miami. not like you can't trust Miami as a regular season team. I don't know why. I just—I'm—I'm I'm like almost just out of out of uh, protest for how bad the division is. I'm just flipping a coin in my head. Three-sided coin. I'm going my yeah, own. Yeah. The, uh, so the Bills, I think, I don't know. I, I see people picking the Bills again because of kind of what happened at the end of last season. Yeah. They're in a mini rebuild. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. know if a lot of people really remember that. They are in, like, a mini rebuild. So we can't expect them to come out and be – what the bills were kind of at the end of the la end of last year and, and, you know, in the playoffs, don't even start, don't even try and get me with the jets. That's just not yeah. even funny. It's, no. it's not even funny, but it is. And I just don't think the Patriots can do it. I feel like we will see Miami. I'll, I'll agree with you on Miami here. Um, they're, they're a great regular season team. It's, I think it's going to be, they're going to run through the regular season and we're going to be thinking super bowl in Miami. And then we'll be let down like normal. Um, Give me the NFC East. Hmm. You know, I never trust the Cowboys, and I can't see the Giants bouncing back. So I, I think with the additions the Eagles made, I think they should be a, the favorite, certainly, and I would go with Philadelphia. Did Philly – Philly lost the division, right? Last year, Dallas won the division, yeah, just so yeah. that they could lose to the first ever uh, – they could be the first ever team to lose to a seven seed, yeah. <laughs> Philly didn't look much better, though, as the five yeah. or whatever they were. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're saying Jalen Hurts looks pretty sharp in camp. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, look, I think you gotta, we got to remember the Eagles were 10 and 1 last year. You know, yeah. through November, they were pr basically the best team in football. You know, they had a yeah. horrible December and January. And, you know, it's hard to recency bias. It's easy to, to keep that in your, in your mind. But they've been a very good team the last few years. And they were in the Super Bowl two years ago. So I, I don't see why they won't bounce back and have a strong season. Yeah, I think it's going to be another one of those years. You'll have Philly and, and Dallas battling it out, down, like really battling it out. Right. I think I'm going to say I, I feel like the Giants are going to bounce back a little. I don't know why. They're not going to make the playoffs, but they're at least going to be competent. They're at least going to be okay. And I think the commanders will kind of be the same. They'll be battling for third, basically. But there will be a time, I think, in November where we'll look at the standings and say, oh my God, you know, maybe Dallas or Philly can slip a little bit. Maybe the Giants can sneak in there and just could, they could finish in second place, but they ultimately won't. They'll kind of collapse at the end of the year. I'm going to go again, Philly. We're, we're going to stay the same here. Um, all right. Give me uh AFC North. Oh, uh, well, I got to uh, want to be a homer. <laughs> Yeah, I want to stick with the Ravens. I think I think they should – I hope they'll have a chip on their shoulder this year after falling short last year. I mean, again, the health of Lamar Jackson, you never know. Um, I think the defense, you can you can generally count on the defense. I mean, the, the whole division's good. I mean, Cincinnati's going to be right back there, you would yeah. think, if Burrow stays healthy. Um, can't forget about that. I mean, this is – I think this is the best division in football. I mean, most, at least – At least – Yeah, at least it's have, as far as having four – playoff caliber, playoff worthy teams. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I think you can make a case for every team in the Steelers. You don't know how Russell Wilson's going to look the Browns. Are they going to be able to recapture that with Watson? I'm not sure. I think the Bengals would be the team I'd be most worried about. Yeah. Uh, never count out the other teams, but I'm, I'm going, I'm going home. You know, I don't, it's, it has to be, again, this is tough. You, you can make a case for literally any of them. Shit, man. I'm mm -hmm. going to go. I feel like there's going to be a resurgence. I feel like there's going to be a bounce back, you know, 
Tomlin, they, they set his win his win loss at eight and a half. You know, they set the Steelers at eight yeah. and a half because they know. And I think the Steelers are going to hit that. I think they're going to hit that in the final week of the year. Am I correct? Hold on. I got to look at the schedule for a second. I, I got to make sure who's playing who. Yeah, final week of the year. I think they're going to hit that in the final week of the year, defeating the Bengals to help the Cleveland Browns mm. finally win the division. Going Browns. All Steelers right. are going to have nine wins. They're going to go nine and eight, beating the Bengals. And the Browns are going to find their way in. But I do think that the Ravens of uh, the Ravens are going to finish third. They have to finish third, right? I don't know. It's going to be tight. You know that division is going to be so tight towards the end, though. Yeah, always. Um, all right. Uh, and then to the NFC. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, the Lions winning it last year was great. And the question is, can... Can they win now with the weight of expectations? I mean, they had some expectations last year, but I don't think anyone realistically, well, besides me, I picked them to go to the NFC Championship and lose to the Niners. But yeah. a lot of people didn't really think that was going to come to fruition. And it's hard to ignore the surge that Green Bay had. Very 2022 Lions-esque yeah. at the end of the year. Um, you could argue that maybe the weight of that Jordan Love contract could come crashing down. But, man, the Packers just know how to transition from one – quarterback rate to the next and yeah they played really well they they very well could have been in the nfc championship game against the lions if they could have hung on against the niners i think the lions will still be good but i see them taking a slight step back i don't think chicago's ready yet and i don't think minnesota's ever ready so i'm gonna take the packers all right pack go pack, yeah. go i'm gonna go with the lions again i thought that after last year they were going to be back. Thought they were going to come out even stronger. They're pissed now. They blew a big lead. Um, I'm going with Detroit. Okay, let's go to the AFC South. The weirdest division in football right now. Yeah. Fair, I mean, you could make a case that every team will, you know, they could win the division. You can also make a case for every team to finish in last. I, I don't know if you can make a great case for Tennessee, but I mean, Jacksonville's always a candidate to maybe bounce back, but man, Indy with Richardson, I know there's gotta be a lot of excitement, but then Houston, oh, yeah. you look at the year Stroud had last year and then bringing in Stefan Diggs, although I don't well, know. They lost the hall Diggs. of fame game. So, you know, <laughs> is there, I wonder if there's some like correlation. I, I don't even what, know. I'm curious if there's a correlation. Between well, I know what, I know my dad took me to Canton in 2001 and I was mad because we, we flew back, I think, on a Sunday, and the next day was a Hall of Fame game, and it was the Dolphins and the Rams. I think the Dol I got to look, but I know the Rams made the Super Bowl that year, and it was uh, – so if we could trace it to that, you know, then then maybe we could start putting together correlations. On other so the Rams won that game, 17-10. to 10. So I actually thought the Rams won that game. And then well, they Houston went isn't the winning the Super Bowl then. What's that? They're not winning the Super Bowl then. That's it's decided. Well, the Rams. I'm saying the Rams made the Super Bowl that year. They made it, they so they're not going to make it because they lost the Hall of Fame. The Texans lost the Hall of Fame game, so right? Not right, going right. to make the. Super well, the Bowl. Dolphins made the postseason that year, but lost to the Ravens in the wild card round. I don't know. I, I, I we could look. That could be a fun uh, little experiment for next one. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. Who knows? You know, Diggs is he one of those guys that is he like you bring him in and he's talented, but could he be a guy that? If things don't go his way, there's some drama there. Yeah. There's some explosive personalities. The Texans look like such an obvious pick that I almost just want to pick the Colts for that reason. Did, I'm trying to remember. The Texans did win the division last year, right? They, yeah, they, they did. They won it over the Colts in the last game. Okay. Jacksonville lost to Tennessee. They could have clinched with a win, and they lost. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough, it's a tough call, those three teams. I'm going to say Indy just for you. I'm going to say Indy because right. it's, it's a close call. I mean, I think Texans have a great shot. And I think I wouldn't be shocked if Jacksonville won. I just don't see Tennessee being there uh, kind of in it's still in a rebuild. So I'm going to go Indy. Well, Tennessee just did add a somewhat big safety. He's a little older, but they did just make a signing yesterday. If it's uh, not Ronnie Lott, then they're not winning no, the division. Not so. Ronnie Lott. I, again, I could make that. I think you can make a case for them to win the division. I, I think it would be more just cannibalize. You know, the, the division cannibalizes cannibalizes themselves, and then eventually the Titans find their way to the top. Um, I'm gonna 
I'm going to stick with the Texans. I have like bad memories with Colts, the Colts actually having expectations because it just feels like the past few years, that's what it's been. You go yeah. into the Wentz year with high expectations. You go into the Jacksonville game with high expectations and they let you down. Uh, I think even there was a little bit of an expectation the next year, the Matt Ryan year. It was like, okay, maybe they can actually be, you know, if Matt Ryan still has somewhat of it, they can be good. And, you know, they almost beat the Eagles and whatever. Um, and then last year, again, some expectations, not that many. And, you know, they lose in the final round and the final round of the or final week of the season. But I just feel like Houston, it's just their time. It really is. I think the Colts might sneak in in the wild card. They'll, they'll probably get like a six spot, I think just because that North will be taking up the rest of the spots. But uh, yeah, I, I, I got to stick with Houston here. Uh, and then to the NFC South. Oh boy. Yeah. That's always like the worst of it. I mean, well, the South, both Souths in general, right? have been pretty. Which is weird yeah. because you would think they would play football a lot. And, you know, Florida high schools, very good at football, you know, wow. like the South. I think they play a lot of football, you know. Yeah, but they also have to practice all off season in the heat, and football is more of a cold weather sport. And if those cold weather teams are tougher, you know, uh, which That's is true. why you call the Dolphins candy ass, for example. The NFC South. I mean, I don't know. Did, like the Bucks bringing back Baker and Evans was like a big deal. I know it wasn't like yeah. they weren't adding players; they were just bringing them back. But I can't in no way can I see the Panthers jumping from two wins to division champion in one year. And um, I don't know the fact, like, I just don't trust Kirk Cousins one bit. I just don't ever want to pick a Kirk Cousins led team. So Atlanta's good though. And they have a lot of talent there and maybe the expectations are too high on the bucks. Mm -hmm. Saints. I don't really trust Derek Carr. I almost just want to pick Atlanta just to pick someone a little different. And maybe Michael Penix will come in and it won't we won't have to put up with Kirk Cousins <laughs> or I won't have to eat crow because Kirk Cousins actually did really well and yeah. led the Falcons to their first Super Bowl championship I don't know why I'm just gonna hunch it and say Atlanta is Kirk Cousins the Atlanta Falcons of quarterbacks it feel, <laughs> feels feels a, a little bit like it the great analogy <laughs> yeah Kirk Cousins well, I thought he was kind of the Minnesota Vikings of quarterbacks, too, if you think about it. He's kind of <laughs> the Washington, then Redskins of quarterbacks. He's kind of fit perfectly for the, the franchises he's played for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, he's won. He has a single postseason win under yeah. his belt, at least. And it took him forever, remember, to get like a Monday night win. He was like... That was for eight. a prime time <laughs> win. Just prime time. For prime time. That was what it was. Right. And so that was actually, that was that postseason win was against the Saints. So maybe he feels good go. playing in New Orleans, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just going to say the Falcons. Because it, it kind of feels like that's one you could just pick a name out of a hat. It, it, yeah. Maybe not Carolina, but you pick the other three. I, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bucks. I uh, I think they're going to have a ride. I think they're going to ride high off of, ride off Baker, of Baker. Baker. Yeah. Baker seems very happy there. Like the Bucks seem it it does not seem like something that would go sour, at least this year. Yeah. Um, um again, it's probably gonna be like a ten and six or ten and seven Bucks team that will win that division. Yeah. Hey, they didn't waste a rot they didn't waste a playoff spot last year though. No, That's, no, they gotta give they, it to them. Yeah, they they clobbered the Eagles, they played the Lions tough. Uh, kind of ran into a buzzsaw there, but no, I mean like the Bucks didn't have like an over one they were, I think they were nine and eight last year winning that division. Yeah, they. I think they kind of caught that towards the end of the year. They started to play a lot better, though. Yeah. Uh, and then, do we even have to do it with the West? I mean, the AFC West. There's only oh, one team. Yeah, no, there's no point. That's the only oh, the question is how many games? How early? My uncle and I always like to joke about this, and we joke, what's what's the earliest we could see them clinching? Will it be by Thanksgiving or not? You know, because that was always the oh, Patriots. Yeah. Like, we win the AFC East by Thanksgiving. The Bills, Dolphins, and Jets would all be well under 500 and. I mean, there is there any – I mean, the only team I could see maybe competing is the Chargers, I guess. If they, I mean, I know the Raiders played them tough head-to-head -head last year, but uh, I don't know. It just well, they also – did you see the Kermit, the frog puppet? I heard about did? it. I, I didn't see yeah. it, yeah. Not good. You yeah, do not want to do that. To, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, guess, I guess we could see the Raiders maybe do it. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. Um, you know, I think God would have to come down with his hand and, and maybe strip 
strip sack Mahomes a couple times. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the only one great equalizer in any case could be if Mahomes gets hurt, Kelsey gets it right. I mean, there's always that possibility. Yeah. But just all things being equal, if the Chiefs stay healthy enough, I, I cannot. And, and now they're, they're talking about using Tony as like a running back on top of on top of him being a receiver, he's hopefully he can just hold on to the ball. Back. They'll win the division. It's not, you know. Yeah. Put put the big man back there. You know, if you want a good value bay, I'm looking at the at the odds. I was looking earlier, and the Chiefs are only I say only only minus two thirty to win the AFC West. I mean, that seems like I don't want to say free money. I want to say, never want to say anything's not free, free money, lot, but pretty good. But money. a pretty yeah. damn good bet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then to the NFC West, and we'll wrap it up. Uh, where what do you see here? Again, I mean it's maybe not as big of a gap as the Chiefs and their division rivals. I still think the 49ers are gonna be tough to be. I think I think they still have their their core intact, their window is still open. Um they're the kind of team that even if as you've seen, even with quarterback injuries, they can plug and play. In a sense, they've been the ultimate Playoff wasting, this playoff spot wasting team. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, wasting Super Bowl spot. spot wasting team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> twenty, you know, now thirty years to be thirty years <laughs> as they go into this year since their last title. But uh, I mean, they are still pretty stacked on both sides of the ball. Oh, okay. I think the Rams made pretty big strides last year. The reason to be hyped for them. Cardinals will be better. Can't wait to see MHJ. Is him calling him that? Robert Harrison Jr. for the Cardinals and and uh, Seattle. Hey, I mean, look, Ray. Defense coordinator goes there. Mike McDonald will be their head coach. So hope they do well. But I, I, I think it's got to be the Niners. Me too. I, I concur with that. I mean, are we? I guess it's more of a race to second place. Yeah. Right. Do you think that's it? Same thing with the Chiefs. You know, in the, in the AFC West. But I'm excited. There is football on your TV this mm-hmm. weekend. Just go watch those helmets. Go, you know, watch like the first quarter really that's all we really get to see yeah anything fun um, but just being able to see the helmets with the logos and the pads and, and the noises it's it's the most wonderful time of the year especially you got baseball now you have the olympics i think i said that last week but i'm gonna say it again it is the most wonderful time of the year make sure to like subscribe comment um the whole thing and we will see you next week